Welcome everybody to Digital Beats, where we discuss the latest in technology, news, and innovative trends in digital transformation. Today's discussion will be super interesting. We'll be talking about key technologies in next generation enterprise level databases. Let me introduce you to our guests. Uh, Dr. Li Fei Fei is vice president at the Alibaba Group. He is the president of the database products business unit of Alibaba Cloud Intelligence. He is a multi award winning scientist and he leads R&D on cloud native database systems and products at Alibaba. Also joining us is Charlie Dai. He is the principal analyst serving enterprise architecture professionals at Forrester. He is a leading expert in cloud, big data, AI, IoT, blockchain, and many more. Uh, and Charlie is also an avid tech blogger with millions of readers worldwide. You mentioned it earlier, Charlie, about software and hardware. And, and, and in any conversation about the database market, we have to touch on the challenges of software and hardware integration. So Charlie, from your point of view, um, on database software and, hard and hardware uh, integration. What, what, what is your point of view on that? Thanks, Mal. I think that is a great question. In general, we think uh, we have to have a system thinking in the architectural design of the database software or the data management technologies. And uh, uh, first, from the hardware perspective, in the past, we have seen a dedicated hardware are designed for database applications, which provided great performance at that time. However, as time goes by, there will be a vendor locking issue there. And as a workload grow continuously and rapidly, the elasticity will become a bottleneck for many enterprises. And, and therefore, in the future, we would expect more standardized commodity hardware infrastructure for your database applications. And secondly, from the software perspective, we should optimize its performance against the underlying hardware. And in the past, we have seen the conversion infrastructure with the software optimized for that specific hardware. But again, it is a tightly coupled, which leads to the vendor locking issue and elasticity can be an issue as well. So from the architecture perspective, it is a very critical <laughs> to follow the loose coupling paradigm, as I mentioned during the cloud native topics. And which means that, you know, just take cloud, for example, the pooling of the resources is critical for elasticity, but the pooling is based on the virtualization mm -hmm. or the containerization right now. So these technologies decouple the computing capabilities from the underlying hardware. And it's the same for the database software. So we have to aim at the standardized hardware infrastructure foundation and then optimize the software that can run at scale with elasticity for the highly dynamic workloads. So these are some of the key drivers behind. Right. Fei Fei, there are really so many state-of-the-art technologies using hardware accelerators uh, to improve database services. Will any of these technologies, in your, in your opinion, disrupt the database market? Totally, I think, I think uh, uh, I give you a few examples. For example, RDMA, uh, uh, fast remote uh, uh, data connected network, allow you to fetch data from a remote node uh, much efficiently than traditional TCP IP network. That has uh, dramatically changed the uh, shared storage uh, space. Uh, you are using RDMA, you, you are increasingly using RDMA or similar type of network technologies to build a distributed shared storage layer, uh, the pooling of resources to enable the higher layers to forget about where data locates at. Uh, so that's a, a, a essential support needed for decoupling computation and storage. So that's one example. Another example is NVM, non-volatile memory. So traditional uh, RAM technologies, uh, they support fast access to data stored in uh, memory. However, those storage are volatile, meaning if you lose power or your machine goes down, those data stored in your memory, those states will be lost. 
So somehow you need to design a mechanism to recover those states uh, in case of system failure. And this brings a lot of system overhead uh, in over battling that part particular issue. With the NAM technology, non-volatile memory, for example, uh, the Optown disk from Intel, uh, we have main memory uh, that's able to not only support fast access to, to data storing those main memory, but being able to be able to uh, survive system failure, uh, being non-volatile. Uh, this is very critical and very useful for the higher layer database kernels so that you don't have to worry about losing states of your data in case of system failure. Uh, this dramatically simplified the design of crash recovery, crash recovery mechanism inside a database kernel. Those are two examples I, I can highlight. But I do right. want to mention, I want to echo back to Charlie's point earlier. Uh, so in the design of uh, next generation database systems, we need to keep in mind of the decoupling of uh, different components in your system and avoid window locking, meaning that you don't want to design your system, and optimize your system for a particular type of hardware. Rather, you by integration, software, hardware, co-design, the trend we are talking about here, what we are talking about is leveraging the hardware properties from commodity hardware uh, devices, meaning those hardware are massively deployed on a large scale. And you want to explore and leverage the newest properties of those commodity hardware and take consideration of those into the design of your software systems so that your software systems benefit from those latest hardware uh, advanced properties, but at the same time, you are not building your system with a window locking uh, mentality uh, or mindset so that you, your system can only be deployed on a specific set of hardware. You don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a balance between the two. Right. And, and does uh, Alibaba Cloud have plans for databases in the future? Yeah, so in fact, our existing cloud native database system are already leveraging some of those uh, latest hardware technologies. For example, we are using RDMA network, uh, our public cloud infrastructure. Uh, in all of our data centers, we have RDMA network. So we're leveraging those to build our uh, shared storage layer. Uh, that's being utilized in our cloud native database systems. In private hybrid uh, cloud environments, customers may not have RDMA network available. Then we find alternative uh, technologies. Uh, for example, we are using uh, optimized TCP IP version uh, to, to do that. Uh, so, and we are using leveraging the traditional uh, storage uh, devices to support uh, our shared distributed storage layer in case RDMA network is not available. So that's a perfect example of uh, taking into hardware property into uh, the design consideration and deployment of your software system so they can get the most benefit out of your hardware, but at the same time, you avoid window locking. You make sure your system can be deployed on commodity hardwares. I have one more question for you, Fei Fei, before we turn to our final uh, topic. So, you know, in the past, there were only a few IT providers integrating hardware and software. So now you're doing it too. So what's the difference between theirs and yours? And do you feel like you're making progress or do you feel like we're kind of make going backwards? So I think we need to really uh, have a good understanding of when we say integrating hardware and the software or hardware software code design principle. Yes, in the past, we have seen an example of such. Uh, I will not name the winner name uh, uh, because we, are, we may be in a competition over there. But you, you have seen traditional database systems where they design uh, and optimize their kernels for a particular site of a mainframe or servers. So that when they deliver to the customer, you not only need to buy the uh, database kernel, you need to buy the associated hardware or server coming with it. So it is, 
is a is a bundle solution. Uh, so there there is reason to do that, and there of course great success of doing that as well. But what we are talking about today, but the downside of that, as you know, Charlie has pointed out, and Milo you have pointed out as well, is that you are running the risk of having your customer face the problem of window locking, right? So um, I'm looking for a database system, but then not only I need to get this particular database system, I need to get this particular set of hardware to go with it. So, so that's a window locking issue right there. So in our approach, we decouple the design of many system components from the underlying uh, software or hardware infrastructure. That's actually the benefit of cloud computing. In cloud computing, the mindset is everything is to be provided as a service. That's why you have ICE, infrastructure as a service. That's why you have PaaS, platform as a service. That's why you have SaaS, software as a service. The key message there is that every component is modulized and designed to be provided as a service so that they, these modules can plug in with each other and together provide the end service that customer needs. So the idea of you know, hardware software code design principle in this domain is not about tightly couple your implementation with a particular set of hardware, but rather the idea is to explore the common properties of commodity hardwares that's already part of your infrastructure uh, massively being deployed but those hardwares are being advanced uh, very quickly, uh, every six months, every 12 months. And how do you explore the properties coming out of those hardware, but already being part of your commodity infrastructure? So that's the topic we're talking about here today. Not about locking with a particular set of very special hardware, but commodity hardware being advanced every six or 12 months and observe their latest properties delivered by those hardware vendors and modula modulize them and provide them as a service, then the higher layers can, when you design those components, have those properties and services in mind and try to leverage those and unleash the power of those infrastructure as a service and then to our customers. So that's the hardware software coding on principle we are talking about. Thank you, uh, Fei Fei and, and Charlie. Thank you very much for your time today. It's it's been a, it's been a really great discussion. I just want to say one thing to the audience. Uh, hey guys, don't forget to catch the next episode of Digital Beats, where we'll discuss more trends in the cloud.